Okay, so this is just a little update on my um, Ender 3 S1 uh, printer, FDM printer, um, how I'm going with it, all the stuff I've printed so far with it. Uh, do I like it? Uh, do I hate it? Um, what problems have I been having? Um, for those that don't know, I was terrified of these printers. I've been putting it off for years uh, just because I've heard so many nightmare stories about them and I just did not want the headache. Um, waited it out, did my research, uh, got the printer, I think, um, I, I love it, I think I might even buy another one. I wanted something that was user friendly, uh, a lot of people said there is no such thing. This one's pretty good. Um, I didn't have to do anything to it, all I did was spend about 10 minutes uh, assembling it. Uh, I threw a print on, it printed pretty much straight away. Um, apart from just adjusting the bed a little bit on one corner, it it just printed. Um, I even tried printing some uh, PTU and it printed as well straight away. Uh, the fir first print just printed. Um, so I'll just go through a couple of the prints and some of the issues that I had found and solved pretty easily. Um, so this was my first print which was the uh, Silk Silver. Uh, came out really really good. Um, some people suggested that I needed to fix up the bed a little bit and just the heat a little bit so that was my first print then my second one or after doing some adjustments and this is in a silver so you can see the difference in the bed there there's a good shot so it's a lot tighter so but that was no effort at all to sort of fix that little issue um, from there I went to doing some of the articulated models which I told myself I'd never do. <laughs> I won't be doing many of them, so I did uh, just two of them. So I did the foul call, articulation foul call. I just wanted to see how well it would print, and that was the first print. I didn't do anything to that, so that was pretty good. Then I went from that to the uh, something a bit longer, which is the Beetlejuice snake. I'm um, get a close up there. I haven't got the small nozzle on it yet, which I'll be doing probably in the next few days. This is still the 0.4, I believe. And that came out fine. So he's all articulated and everything. Again, he was just printed like that on the bed. Popped right off. Uh, prints are popping right off too. I'm not having any issues about prints not sticking or sticking too hard. Uh, so that's great. Um, I decided to throw on a big piece. So these are the stands for the uh, house hand display from the movie House. So that will go on like that. I thought I'd print it out um, an FDM just to see what would happen. And I needed something big to print anyway. Uh, this worked out to be about $8 to print. Uh, it did take 26 hours. If I was to do this in resin... Um, it would have taken about 13 hours and probably would have cost me around $35 uh, with the resin I'm using uh, because it's quite a big piece. Um, I had to print it like that. It was the only way I could fit it into the S1. Um, so these printed out great. The first one I did because I've done two. Um, and at this point I haven't really leveled the bed out so I printed that. Uh, so that was the flat side down and you can clearly see, actually it was this one, you can clearly see there's an issue around this area. So this corner, it was printed like that, so that corner over there was a little bit low, so I um, just tightened that up a little bit, pushed it up a little bit, and a couple of turns, and I ended up getting that result. So just by a little bit of adjustment, um, much better print. I think I still need to just move it up a tad a little bit more because I've just got a little bit of a sort of a, a lip there. It's not as sharp as, say, the back sides. But that was the only thing I, I could really pick on it. So there's a, a good shot there, which, you know, I'll fill this uh, with some putty, uh, some Incredifil. I'll try Incredifil on that from Monocure. Uh, paint that black for the base. Um, the other thing I did notice is on both prints, and I think this is the starting point. Maybe somebody can correct me uh, in the comments. But that line there, 
I think that's the needle point. So it'll do its rotation and come back to that one point and go around again. I think that's that. You can change that in the slicer. So I can put that on the back or somewhere like that. Um, so that's the only thing I really have to change. Other than that, they both came out pretty much perfect apart from that first one. But that's my error because I didn't level the bed. Um, but yeah, very happy with them. So I do see the benefits in printing uh, an FDM rather than resin. Uh, this is a lot lighter. Uh, just this bell, um, I did solid because I needed uh, some structural support in there. Uh, this thing is heavy. I mean, can you imagine printing this all out in resin too? I mean, you can hollow it, but um, the walls are pretty thin anyway, so you wouldn't be saving too much resin. And then you've got to uh, cure all the inside of that, uh, which would be a bit of a nightmare. So that is all printed in PLA, uh, all these pieces and the dragons. So quite happy with that. So I moved on to TPU because I want to print some rubber parts, some wheels, tracks and stuff like that. Um, so I started with, and I wanted a waste, um, just the waste part for the Johnny Five. So I printed out that, and is that the flat one? No, that's the flat one. So I printed that flat down like that and if I have another one uh, a resin one which I don't have on hand but if we get a close-up and I've heard this is quite common that you get a lot of hair all these threads going through it so that was the first one I did um, I didn't change any settings or anything like that because they seemed both the same um, the second one I did, I actually printed upright like that to see if it would make a difference and I still got all that stringing. Uh, this wasn't the best print in this orientation. Um, and the third one I did, so I did two more uh, downwards, so that was, this is an uncleaned one that was printed down like that. Uh, this is the cleaned up one. So I just got um, a pair of tweezers and just sort of pulled off all the strings and then got a lighter and just singed off all of the um, excess hairs, which is not bad. It's not bad. And TPU is flexible. So I needed this part uh, for a particular model I'm doing where he has to move in the chest area and the waist area. So I need this to be flexible. So I printed them off, um, I printed a track pad off. It seems to like flat pieces a lot better rather than sort of shapes and stuff. So again, it's nice strong rubber. Um, I just printed one of these off again. This is more like my test sort of print becoming. And that's all like rubbery as well. But that came out all right. It is a bit funny to um, print. And I did some wheels. Uh, these came out great. I get a close up there. And that is the back sides of them. So that was on the bed. Again, these just popped right off. That is the face side. So this is straight off the bed, just like this which I'm quite impressed with and again they're um, all rubbery and soft and that's what I've printed so far I'm um, quite impressed with it uh, again I said I'd happily buy another one um, I'd probably use it for this kind of thing uh, bigger pieces, structural pieces um, pieces that are in the background, pieces that are underneath resin pieces um, but as far as sort of doing like these sort of detailed pieces, yeah, I, I can see the um, reason why people like doing this sort of thing and choosing different uh, filaments. Um, I wouldn't mind trying the wood filament uh, because I could have just printed that in the wood one along with the uh, backboard for the bill. Uh, that would have looked nice. I'm just combining both sort of printers. Um, but yeah, that's my experience so far, and um, for those who are hesitant in trying it, um, I recommend the Ender 3 S1 
Uh, it's very easy to use. Um, it, even for myself, I've, I'm finding it very, very easy to use. Uh, very user friendly. Um, but that's that's now. Uh, who knows what's going to happen in a, a week's time or a month's time? I've been running that thing nonstop. Has not turned off since I've got it. But uh, that's my experience so far, and yeah.